everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of normal and standard normal continuous random variables. In the last video, we primarily focused on how to solve probability problems if we are given just a standard normal random variable or a normal random variable where the mean and the standard deviation were given and the relationship between the two distributions. In this video, we're going to continue the discussion, but we're going to solve problems that require a backwards process. In particular, suppose I give you a particular probability, and I want to know between what two numbers on the standard normal or normal distribution will that probability exist. So these are what we typically refer to as inverse problems. So since we already know that we cannot solve integral applications for the normal distribution by hand, most of these calculations will be done via software, and they used to be done via tables. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on the one-sided problems, the two-sided symmetric problems, and then we're going to go into some example problems um, on how you may use these in applications. Let's get started. All right, so let's just begin by reviewing some of the basic concepts of normal and standard normal distributions that you definitely should understand before we actually get into this discussion. So the first distribution, which is called the normal probability density function for a random variable x, which is said to be normally distributed, is given by this distribution 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi e to the power negative 1 half x minus mu over sigma the quantity squared. Yes, a little bit daunting at first, but we should be comfortable with it by now. And then we have the more friendly version, 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus 1 half z squared. That is what we call the standard normal distribution. We can easily convert between the two via what is called the z-score transform. Right? So we can go from one to the other via what is called a z-score where z sub x is going to be equal to x minus mu all over sigma, right? So for a x random variable, the mean is just mu, and the standard deviation is just going to be equal to uh, sigma. And for the standard normal distribution, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. So the standard normal distribution has quite a few easy examples, which is why we typically work with it over the normal. Although the real world applications are solved in normal, we can typically solve them in the standard normal as we saw last time. So what does this mean? So this means that the probability that x is in between a and b, inclusive or not, it doesn't matter since x is continuous, is actually the same as the probability that z, a standard normal random variable, is between the z-score for a and the z-score for b. So if we look at this from an integral perspective, that means the integral from a to b of a normal distribution function, f of x of x, dx, is equal to the integral from the z-score from a to z-score to b of the standard normal distribution, dz. So they are the same. right? So in terms of the graphical perspective, since integrals are just areas, so if we want to find the probability, for example, um, that someone is within one standard deviation from the mean. So mu minus sigma, mu plus sigma. So our question is, what is this area equal to? Yes, the numbers are a little bit weird and that distribution function is a little bit more complex, but we can find this in our equivalent standard normal realm, right? So this is x and this is going to be z. So the standard normal distribution is going to be centered around 0. So what is the z-scores for these numbers, mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma? So the z-score for mu minus sigma, so that's going to be x minus mu all over sigma. The mu's cancel and the sigma's cancel, just leaving us with negative 1. And the z-score for mu plus sigma is going to be x, so that's mu plus sigma x minus mu over sigma. So the mu's cancel, sigma's cancel, just leaving us with plus one. So we're going to integrate the standard normal distribution from minus one to one, find that area, and these areas here are equal to each other, whatever they may be. Now since we know that the standard normal and the normal distribution are non-elementary functions, in general we cannot calculate the exact values, so all these integrals will be calculated via some software, MATLAB, uh, Desmos or whatever, uh, back in the day they used to use tables, so that's okay too, right? But in either way, we're going to be using software to solve these integrals. 
But in this video, what are we actually going to be looking at? So now we're going to try and go backwards. So if I give you some bounds, A and B, you can find the area between them. Now what if I tell you the area between two points, what are those bounds? This is what we call an inverse problem. So let me pretty much uh, give an example of what I'm sort of looking at here. So last time we discussed how we can find, via some software, the integral from negative 2.1 to 1.3 of, for example, the standard normal distribution, right? And we found that that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.8853. Or we can say, you know, what is the integral from, say, 2.3 to infinity of the standard normal distribution, right? And we can use softwares or tables to figure that approximation. That's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.0107, right? Um, two general types, uh, finite bounds and non-bounded intervals we can find areas of, right? So now we're going to go backwards. What if I give you this area and I want to find these bounds? And of course, there's several different variations of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by defining f of x. And this is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to x of the standard normal distribution with respect to some other variable. So if we take this graph, so this is typically what we refer to as the cumulative density function for little f, right? And what does that mean? So as we approach along this domain, since this is a probability density function, the total area should start at zero from the leftmost boundary and converge to one uh, at the rightmost boundary. So it's definitely a monotonically increasing function, um, always is for a cumulative density function, and it pretty much has that graph. So notice that the range of this function is from 0 to 1, right? So let us assume I subtract this curve by some number. So let p be a number between 0 and 1. That's going to be our probability. And then we're going to consider f of x p to be equal to the integral. Actually, I'm just going to call it x just to keep things simple. Uh, the minus integral of minus infinity to x of n of t dt minus p, so p is outside the interval. Integral, right? So what is our graph going to look like? So that means, depending on what the value of p is, this graph is going to shift down, right? It's going to have some horizontal asymptotes. I don't really care about where those are, but then I have this number here. So this number, which I'm going to call xp, is called the percentile for the distribution. So xp is the pth percentile of f. So we can use this function and graph it in order to find the percentiles of a normal or standard normal distribution, whichever ones we want. Right? And there's many ways that we could go about this. And we'll go through different examples of them. So now that we know the basic idea and structure, and we're also going to be doing some Desmos calculations, let's do a couple examples on how we can use this to solve percentiles and solve some other problems. All right, so let's begin with a very basic example. Let us solve this integral equation from minus infinity to x of the standard normal distribution n with respect to time. And let's find out when that integral is equal to 73%. So what exactly does this mean? Because solving integral equations typically isn't the problem we try to solve, at least not in this class. But what does this problem really tell us? So let us assume that this is our non-graphically drawn to scale normal distribution, or standard normal PDF, right? And we want the integral from minus infinity to some number x and we want this area to be equal to 73%. So what is this x equal to, right? So clearly that's going to be the 73rd percentile of the standard normal random variable, right? So that can definitely become handy. Now in terms of the graph, notice that I've put the x uh, larger than 0 right, because remember the standard normal is centered at zero. How do I know it's to the right of zero? Because notice my area is greater than 
Remember, for normal, 50% of the data is on the left and 50% of all the data is on the right. And since I'm going from minus infinity to some number that's positive, and the total area is larger than 50%, my corresponding x value is going to be larger than 0. Now, if this number on the right-hand side of this equation was less than 50%, whatever solution to this integral equation there is should be negative. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function f, capital F, and this is going to be my cumulative density function. So I'm going to integrate from minus infinity to x of the standard normal distribution, and I'm going to subtract 73%, right? So what does this graph look like? So we know what cumulative density functions look like. So this is going to look something like that, right? So what is this number here? So that's going to be the solution to this particular equation. And if we sort of draw our normal distribution on top of this, right? So whatever that number is where that blue curve crosses the x-axis, that is going to be whatever value will make this equal to 73%, right? So of course you can do that in Desmos or something like that, and you can find that this 73rd percentile is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.6128. Now if you're doing this in Desmos, Desmos has a nice little solving feature. So if we want to solve that on another line, you would type in, for example, 0 tilde f of z on one line. And then on the next line, you can just type in z. And I will say that z is approximately equal to 0 0.6128. And if it doesn't work, I can sort of show you in another example. Right? So that is one of the most common types of uh, inverse problems that we saw. Later we'll give some applications. But let's look at another type of problem that we should be able to solve also. Let us consider another example. Let us consider the equation, the integral from minus x to x of the standard normal distribution with respect to t is equal to 0 0.54. So what value of x will make this integral equation true. So let us look at this from the graphical perspective first, just to understand what we're actually looking for. So as we already know, the standard normal distribution is symmetrically distributed around zero. So we want to find a number x. So if x is to the right some distance x, then minus x is going to be to the left of it the same exact distance. So we want to find an area that's symmetrically distributed around the mean and we want to know what value of x will make this area 0 0.54, right? So what is this x value equal to? So if we find x to be equal to negative 14, then negative x will be negative 14. Very simple. So if we know one, we know the other. It's just the opposite. So this isn't quite a cumulative distribution function. We're not going to approach it quite the same way. But we can solve it graphically and algebraically in an equation in Desmos pretty much in the same exact way as we did before. So we're going to define a new function, capital F of x. This is going to be equal to the integral from minus x to x of n of t dt. And we're still going to subtract by our probability value, 0 0.54. So as usual, this curve is also going to cross the x-axis somewhere. So it's going to have the same exact type of shape as our cumulative distribution function. right? And this number here is going to be the value x such that the area between it and its opposite is 0 0.54, right? So green is the graph of this function, right? And you can find that that number, I'm going to call it z, is approximately equal to, if you look at the graph, 0 0.7388. Or you can, if you don't want to use the graphical approach, you can do the numerical solution approach, which uses some numerical schemes uh, that you may have learned. Uh, from calculus, uh, and that's going to come out to, so if you use 0 tilde f of z on a line, that's going to give you the z is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.738847, two six decimal places. Okay, so those are the two main uh, problems that you definitely should be comfortable with, and we're going to be using these a lot later when we work with hypothesis testing. Um, that is the integral from minus infinity to something and the integral from minus something to something. Now let us look at some applications in the real world 
where we may want to use these inverse problem techniques to solve those problems. Suppose the blood pressures are normally distributed with a mean of 122 millimeters of mercury and a standard deviation of 2.3 millimeters of mercury. What is the 80th percentile for the blood pressure of the population? So what do I mean by what is the 80th percentile for the blood pressure of the population? That means 80% of the population has a blood pressure of this number or less. Okay. So if we sort of draw a picture of what's going on here. So blood pressures are normally distributed, right? So since this is our 50% mark, we want to find a number all the way up here. So we're going to be looking for a z-score first, right? And want this area to be equal to 80%. Okay. So we're going to begin by defining our function, capital F, right? So capital F is going to be equal to, so this pink area is just going to be the integral from minus infinity to z, or I'm just going to call it minus infinity to x, of our standard normal distribution, dt. And I want that area to be equal to 80%, right? So of course, that's going to have a graph, as we typically have. And it's going to be some number greater than uh, zero because it's uh, a percentage greater than 50%. And once we look at this graph, we find that this number, I'm going to call it z, is going to be equal to 0 0.8416. Or you can use the command 0 tilde f of z, and then z will be equal to some accuracy. right? In the next example, I'll show you in Desmos how to do that, if you don't already know how. Right now, this is not a blood pressure. This is the z-score for the blood pressure that we want. Right. So how can we find the blood pressure that is associated to this? So it's given that the mean of this distribution mu x is going to be equal to 122, and the standard deviation is equal to 2.3. So we know that the z-score for a particular value z_x is going to be equal to x minus mu over sigma. So we know the z-score, we know sigma, we know mu, what we want is x. So we can simply rearrange this equation and find that x is going to be equal to mu plus the z-score, zx, times sigma. Now this formula is going to be extremely important later on, so I suggest memorizing its structure. And typically we always write zx first and later you'll see why. Right? So that means the x value for the 80th percentile is going to be equal to the mean, 122, plus the z-score, so it's an approximation, of 0 0.8416 times the standard deviation of 2.3. And once you work out those calculations, you're going to find that we have 123.94, and we're in x domain, so that's going to be millimeters of mercury. That means 80% of the population has a blood pressure of approximately 123.94 millimeters of mercury or less, or the 88th percentile is that number. Now let us look at the other type of distribution of area, for example, minus x to x, and how we can use that to solve problems. And we'll also go to Desmos to see how we can do it there. Suppose that the heights of a demographic of individuals is normally distributed with a mean height of 162 centimeters and a standard deviation of 4.7 centimeters. Between what two height values is 50% of the population symmetrically distributed about the mean? So let us draw a picture to sort of see what we're talking about here. So we have our heights, let's call it X, capital X, right? And the mean is of course uh, 162. So we need to figure out some lower bound, let's call it A, and some upper bound B, such that 50% of them is located here. Now notice we're talking symmetrically distributed. So that means 25% are from A to the mean and 25% are from 162 to B. Okay? So as usual, we're going to set up our equation. I'm going to call it, say, minus x to x. So this is going to be capital F. This is going to be equal to the standard normal distribution. I want that area to be equal to 0.50. So let's go to Desmos and sort of see how we can uh, solve this structure. Okay? 
So what we have here, so I'm going to begin by defining my standard normal distribution, so 1 over the square root of 2 pi, and then times e to the power of negative 0.5 x squared. So exp is another way you can do um, the natural base uh, to an exponent. So we're going to define our function, capital F. This is going to be equal to integral, so int, from minus x to x, go away equal sign, of our standard normal, I'm going to call it f of t dt, and we want that area to be equal to 0 0.5. Okay? So of course, after some delay, we can see that this definitely does cross the x-axis at 0 0.6745. Right. So that is the z-score for the upper bound of B for our um, blood pressure range. So let us see if I can use Desmos to analytically solve that so I don't have to round or anything like that. So I'm going to call it z. So I'm going to solve the equation 0, f of z. And we see that our z-score is 6.67449. Right. So that's that number there. And of course if we zoom in we can get that accuracy if we really want it. Okay? So remember that our mean, our mean was 162 centimeters and our standard deviation was 4.7. Okay? So our upper bound B is the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation 4.7. Right? So that is our upper bound for our region, 165.17 millimeters of mercury. And A, well, what is A? So what is the z-score for the lower bound? It's going to be the opposite of the z-score for our upper bound, right? Which is just going to be minus z. So I'm just going to do m minus z times 4.7. That's going to be 158.83, okay? So if I go from um, x is equal to a and x is equal to b. So between 158.83 and 165.17, 50% of the population is going to have a blood pressure between those two values. Okay? So that is how you can use Desmos and inverse problems and software to solve inverse problems for normally distributed random variable problems. So stick around and we'll do some, I'll give you some extra examples to work on just to test your knowledge. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.